the same on my neck Good everyone, it's Steve from Sneaker Tech Talk, back with another video today. For today's video, we will be doing a performance review on the Gratitude Air Jordan 11. As far as the traction goes on the Air Jordan 11, you're getting a translucent outsole on this pair right here. Obviously, it is kind of a milky outsole right here. And then in the heel and in the forefoot, you are getting these herringbone pods. And how these perform on court is amazing. This is a 90s traction pattern set up through and through. It is kind of thick and chunky and just really offers great bite on court. Now, they do have a pretty nice squeak when you are making those hard lateral cuts. So I really had no issues when I was making any hard cuts within the Air Jordan 11. Obviously they do pick up quite a bit of dust. So you know, wipe every four or five plays, but I had no slip outs, no slide outs, nothing. And I do think this would be a pretty viable setup outdoors as these traction kind of pods here in the forefoot and heel are pretty thick. They are pretty tightly knit together, but overall a fantastic setup as far as the traction goes on the Air Jordan 11. I'm going to have to give these a very nice eight and a half out of 10. So as far as the cushioning goes on the Air Jordan 11, you're getting a very standard setup Phylon midsole, which is very nice and springy underfoot. A ton of compression here on this pair in the Gratitude Air Jordan 11s. And then housed within that midsole directly underfoot is a full length air unit from heel to toe. So it offers a ton of impact protection while staying low to the floor and just having very nice heel to toe transition, a very fluid setup, something that I really enjoy underfoot. Every time I throw on a pair of Air Jordan 11s, I am reminded why I love the cushioning setup so much. So again, nothing special, especially for this shoe being a 1995 shoe. Nike is using air strobo units, which more or less is directly what's under your foot here in the Jordan 11. So I enjoy this setup, pretty much no break in time, close to the floor, and just a very fluid and nice setup in the Jordan 11s. So as far as the cushioning goes, I'm gonna have to give these a very nice eight out of 10. So as far as the fit goes, I did go with my standard size 10 and a half. And basically this shoe fits more or less like a glove. The toe does have a little bit of extra volume here in the Jordan 11s. If you really cinch down those laces, your foot won't be going anywhere with inside this shoe. I will mention it is a little bit narrow right here at the toe box. So if you are a wide footer, I would recommend going up half a size. But overall, I really enjoy the fit on this. It can be a little bit sloppy once they break in and you might have to kind of adjust your foot within the shoe and the lacing, kind of how tight you have it. Because once this raw, these raw materials break in, it kind of loosens up a little bit and you will have to adjust it throughout play. But overall, nothing special, something that definitely gets by today here in 2023, which is pretty crazy because this shoe, this model right here is almost 30 years old now. So I really enjoy the fit on these guys, but it does cinch your foot down nicely in the Air Jordan 11. So as far as the fit goes, I'm gonna have to give these a pretty nice seven and a half out of 10. One thing I will mention is that the tongue right here is kind of gusseted right here in the middle of the tongue. And it does kind of have bungees right here on the inside so this tongue won't really go anywhere so it kind of stays directly in the middle of your foot it doesn't kind of slide down to the side on either side so overall the fit on the jordan 11s is definitely nice on foot in my opinion now as far as the materials go this shoe does differ quite a lot from a standard air jordan 11 from 1995 so the biggest thing that you're going to notice a difference in is that this shoe does have a leather upper now a standard air jordan 11 has ballistic nylon mesh which is very lightweight and very supportive. This one here is gonna be a little bit heavier with the leather upper, but more or less, I enjoyed this because this material here is really gonna stand the test of time. And I think it can, it's gonna be very strong and durable on foot. But as far as what you're getting from materials, you do have this patent leather 
that does wrap around 360 degrees around this shoe. And as far as the aesthetics go, this shoe looks fantastic on court. It's really timeless and honestly my favorite looking basketball shoe of all time. And seeing this shoe on court is just fantastic. My biggest gripe with this shoe though is the patent leather that they used on this year's release is just super thin and super cheap. It's like, honestly, if you look at it right here compared to years previous, the cut, the grain right here is super thin and just not as supportive in my opinion compared to past years patent leather that they, that they have used on Jordan 11. So that's my biggest gripe is that patent leather that they did use on this Gratitude Jordan 11. The leather is a very nice hit. It is tumbled right here in between the eyelets. The eyelets themselves and then the leather here wrapping around the heel, heel is kind of a flat or smooth leather material. And then the tongue does have that kind of tumbled leather material here as well. So overall, a very nice, very classy looking basketball shoe on court. One thing you're not gonna get though, is any breathability within this shoe. These shoes are hot boxes on foot, but I will take that all day because the aesthetics on court are fantastic. So as far as the materials go in this setup right here, I'm gonna have to give this one right here an eight out of 10. Now in my previous performance review of the Air Jordan 11 with the standard really nice patent leather and ballistic nylon mesh, I did give them a nine and a half out of 10. But with this setup right here, it does drop down quite a bit because it's just a really thin kind of cheap patent leather that does crease, if you see right here, really bad. Usually they just crease right here on the medial side, but as you can see right here on the toe box, these things are mangled after like six hours of use, which is kind of disheartening considering we're paying $300 here in Canada, 230 USD. Now, as far as the weight goes for the Air Jordan 11 in the Gratitude colorway, this is a size 10 and a half and these do come in at 17.55 ounces. So obviously compared to today's standard, these are pretty heavy, but on foot they don't feel overly heavy, but compared to most shoes in a size 10 and a half for me today, you know that 12 to 14 ounces for me is pretty standard. This is a heavier basketball shoe, all things considered here in 2023. So as far as the support goes in the Air Jordan 11, kind of what you're getting standard in most or all Air Jordan 11s across the board, you are getting this internal TPU heel counter, which is very rigid and does keep your foot locked in at the back of the shoe. It does offer some great support at the back of the Jordan 11. Obviously the shoe is kind of a mid top or a high top basketball shoe right here. So you are getting some extra support or at least a feeling of support on your ankle right here. You do have these eyelets that do wrap around your foot. So when you really crank these laces down, these eyelets kind of act as a seatbelt and cinch around your foot and just offer some really great support as far as that lateral containment goes. Now, usually patent, this patent leather was kind of put on the shoe to kind of offer that dressy feeling where you can dress it up or dress it down. And it was supposed to offer some great lateral containment when you were making those hard lateral cuts. This material here was pretty strong and would house MJ's foot within the shoe really nice on court. Now with this one here, it's pretty thin and flimsy. So it does offer a little bit more flex but this leather material does offer and kind of make up for that as far as offering some more support within this upper. Your foot is sitting ever so slightly within this Phylon midsole, so that does kind of house your foot within this shoe also. And then at the bottom of the shoe, it does offer a pretty wide and stable base here at the forefoot. And then you also have that carbon fiber shank plate that does run from right about here to the back of the shoe right here. So as far as midfoot support or rigidity goes, you're gonna have no issues in the Air Jordan 11 as this shoe does not kind of contort or twist in any way. That carbon fiber is doing a great job. One thing I did wanna mention about this carbon fiber is both of them have cracked right here at the back. So I think it's more prevalent on the right shoe. I don't know if you guys can see this right here, but right here, there is a crack right through the carbon fiber and you can kind of feel the fibers broken right here. So it's really crappy for a nearly $300 basketball shoe. But again, a ton of people are telling me you're not supposed to play in Jordan 11s, which I don't think is true because more or less this shoe has great cushioning, support and traction in my opinion, but it's just really disheartening seeing 
this carbon fiber shank plate cracking here in 2023. But overall, the support within this basketball shoe is pretty good in my opinion. Nothing special compared to today's standards, but it does get you by on the basketball court here almost 30 years later in 2023. So as far as the support goes on the Jordan 11s, I'm gonna have to give these a decent eight out of 10. I really think it has everything covered, but again, compared to today's standards, what most shoes and brands are offering you, you can get a better setup out there today as far as basketball shoes go. So that's gonna do it for today's performance review on the Air Jordan 11. My favorite features of this shoe, firstly and foremost, the aesthetics of this shoe, as far as the looks are fantastic. Seeing these on court is just so timeless and brings me back to 1995, seeing MJ play in the Air Jordan 11s. Every time I see them on court, I just kind of get goosebumps. I love playing in them because they have some great features. The traction on this shoe is fantastic. The cushioning is very nice underfoot and usually the materials are definitely really nice also. The fit's decent, support's decent. I think it's a great basketball shoe on court here today in 2023 if you can swallow that really expensive price tag of $230. I did want to cover these on court because the Jordan 11s are one of my favorite basketball shoes if not my favorite basketball shoes of all time. Like I mentioned that's going to do it for today's video today. As always if you guys can like comment and subscribe that does help the channel a ton check out my instagram over at sneaker tech talk as it is kind of an extension of my youtube channel with all my pickups basketball footage and nostalgia as a whole thanks for watching today's video on the air jordan 11 performance review and until next time peace